I don't think so. Okay, uh, so in this first tutorial, uh, sort of tutorial, I guess, um, not not exactly a formal tutorial, but I'm going to be making stuff, and you can probably learn something from it. <clears throat> I'm going to be making a giant clam uh, enemy from uh, basically start to finish over of course of the course of however many days it takes. Um, at the moment, I just want to try and get a shell modeled, a decent shell modeled, because it looks um, like an interesting shape. And so I've gone and just gotten a few uh, images off the internet. And so some of these uh, finer details I'm not really going to be worrying about because it's a stylized game and <clears throat> I don't need it to be realistic or anything. Um, I'm not even really going to keep these in the uh, in the 3D viewer or anything, just because I don't I don't think I need to. I can always just bring them back up if I need. So let's get started then. All right. Um, I I had the idea um, to start out with of using something like um, the top of a cylinder, basically a disc. So I'm just going to try this with uh, the default settings. I'll go with... Uh, all I need is the disk here. Center that on everything. <clears throat> so now um, the idea comes into play. So the idea was to bevel that in, um, collapse it, and then do a, uh, a vertex drag weld on this to, let's say, here. And you can see that's already kind of giving us um, a shell sort of look. And just to make sure that that actually is only one vertex. Okay. So where to go from here? Um, well, now that I have this shape, I should be able... Well, I don't like it. <laughs> Pointing, it's pointing the wrong way at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll have to mess around with which direction it points uh, whenever I export to Unity, but I don't need to do that. Worry about that while I'm modeling it. I'll need to worry about it when I rig it. Sort of. Um, so, now that I kind of have this shape, I'm just going to select some uh, some of these pieces, because I need some um, some segments on the inside. And actually, that looks pretty good other than this this edge over here is kind of kind of messed up. So my lasso, I'll just go over here, select some of these polygons, and it's probably need to select that row as well. It's probably yep, that looks that looks even. <clears throat> Let's see how many of these I have. Twelve, is it? Does it go back far enough? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go one more. I'm gonna go. Do fourteen across. Okay. So, delete those, and all right, 14, so if I'm raising these, it's four, five, six, seven, seven, um, odd number, so that's good. And I'm going to go ahead and save the scene and duplicate the mesh just so I have a backup. Uh, instead of saving incremental and you know getting a whole bunch of files, I tend to I'll do that part later, I guess, whenever I get to rigging. But for modeling, I just duplicate the mesh and uh, and move on. Um, looks a bit rigid, so let's try going and smoothing this a bit. Nah, smooth it a bit more. Mm, let's see. put this, well, let's just go with 5,000. 
<clears throat> or I could go with 5001, so it's over 5000. Let's see. I don't know. I guess that kind of. Go for a top view here. Uh, it's probably good enough. Kind of clamshell shaped. It even has that little divot here. Alright. And I'm going to duplicate it again and save the scene again. Uh, so now I need to curve it. Alright. Let's um, try radial fall off. Turn snapping with vert vertex on. Ah, there we go. And we'll just sort of approximate the shape of uh, that. And then I'll turn snapping off. Drag this up. And I like to use uh, manual numbers. I don't like to just drag things and leave them at like, you know, 250 3.78 millimeters or something random. I like clean numbers. Now, is that big enough? Yeah, probably something more like the 300. Oh, oh actually, this is fairly flat unless it's been opened. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Well, I can always go back and, and make it flatter. Easy enough. Alright, so now that I've, I've bent it, duplicate. <clears throat> and we'll go with uh, Origin Action Center. I'm just going to mirror this across the Y axis. Um, and now the great thing about uh, basically having mirrored that is I can go in here and bridge this <clears throat> to get a continuous shape. Edge and bridge. And let's see, smooth. And curve doesn't look good. Linear. So definitely smooth, although it could be smoother, I suppose. Hmm. Oh, I can just run smooth on it again. Or I could, yeah, I need to run smooth on it to help with these transitions. Uh, so deform, smooth, and I don't want 5000, set that to zero. And just kind of have a look at this. Oops, I didn't mean to apply it twice. All right. Hmm, 250. Kind of lost that divot there, but that's easy to get back. <clears throat> can just move this in a bit. Even, even well, that's actually a small detail anyway. It's not something that is probably even going to be noticed at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and duplicate that. Nope, oh, wrong duplicate. There we go. Save. And that looks, uh, I guess it looks full enough, large enough, right? Now I need to try and get these um, teeth, basically, or what what are going to be teeth for it, sort of, in, in my game? The ridges. Okay, so for the top I think I want to have have that go down. Oop, I hope I didn't move anything. So uh, we'll just have to experiment with this a little bit. And let's go do something like that. I do not want the side side ones there. 
Okay. So let's try our fall off friend. Turn on snapping. Do I have grid snap on? Nope. Let's put grid snap on. And we'll go do something like so. And try just moving this. Nice. Mostly. Hmm. Mostly nice. Alright. Uh, how about another radial? Okay. You put my linear back. Now I'll go with add radial. I'll sort of approximate that shape again. Now let's see how this goes. It's better. Hmm. Turn fifty millimeters. Hello, broke killer. How's it going? I am now fumbling my way through trying to model the giant clam. Sorry, I don't know how long you've been here. <clears throat> Let's see, so I probably don't need to move this up quite so drastically. Even something like 100 millimeters. Um, it might even be a better idea, rather than moving it, to try scaling it. So let's we'll drop that, grab the scale tool, and let's say yeah, automatic action center. Put it somewhere like here. Cool. Well, uh, if you have any questions, I know you do programming. I'm not, not sure how much interest you have in modeling, but if you have questions, feel free to ask. And, ah, the fall off. Yeah, so I need to adjust that fall off out a bit, probably. Hmm. Alright, scale tool again. And it doesn't. There we go. It wasn't wanting to go where I wanted it. So let's see. Maybe something like that. Like a hundred and uh no, one ten. Probably good to adjust that fall off out as well, because I want to make sure I'm getting some of the ridge stuff more evenly. Might be a little too much. Maybe something like that. Okay, I probably need to scale more on the y-axis. Ah, crap. No, why did it do that? Stop doing that. Ah, alright, so the undos might be a little messed up now. Yep. Okay. Undo to there. Did I seriously just lose my fall off? Yep. Okay, so the undo system, I guess, um, just had a problem, which is fine. I can just reuse this selection. It's pretty easy to set that up, so let's add my. Hate that when the. Uh, Menus get kind of stuck like that. Alright, so from that last experience, I know I need to have this a bit larger. Okay, and now action center it should be set to automatic, so it shouldn't matter. I'm going to set to automatic to be sure. There we are. And let's give that a scale. Yay! Now, 
scale it this way. Okay, so that's too much, but it's the idea. I want that to be like 110. And why does it keep reapplying? That's not very good. Yeah, interesting. I'll just drag these. It's fine. 110. 140. Let's have a look. Um, hmm. Now I remember why I moved them instead of scaling them. Because they have to be opposite. Uh, if this one goes down, that one has to go down. If this one goes up, that goes up. Right now they're uh, they're uniform. Let's see if I can just move thing. Nope. That'll get all wonky. Okay. So, uh, I messed up my linear fall off. Why? Why does it hate me? No fall off. Linear. And so, yeah, this is kind of how this goes. Uh, basically, trying trying to make something. Um, you have to think about it. Try some stuff to figure out what works. So, ah. Anyway, I so I have a, a general idea of what's what's going to work for this. It's just a matter of getting it to uh, do exactly what I want. I'm not really sure what's going on with the undos that, that are causing this to uh, keep dropping things. Even now, it, like snapping just kind of stopped. It's highlighting, but it's not doing anything. And that is not where I want it. I need this to be... Oh, so now it snaps. Okay, linear, got that. Now I'm going to try moving again. And instead of simply just going up like this, I'm also going to bring this forward a bit. Maybe not quite that far. forward something maybe like 50. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So it's creating some interesting problems that would be most easily resolved by adding another linear falloff, but I can't do that. Uh, I can only add one of each type of falloff. Hmm. Because I don't, and and really, I think the kind of the biggest thing is that I don't want to move this up. I I really, because what it's doing, um, is it's kind of it's moving the center of this up. Mm, let's see. Actually, it doesn't look like it's too bad. But I would really prefer if I could scale it and have that not mess things up. Um, I suppose I would need to deselect um, half of these. So I can scale this upward uh, and not have it. And I, let's just leave it in the center there and see what happens. Okay, so because I'm not scaling the bottom ones, that's fine. I can probably figure that out. Mess with that later. 
Action Center Automatic. What about that? Ah, uh, come on. Stop doing that. Let's see. So I don't really want it to go forward too much. And I forgot about that. Short term memory. I want it to go up. And now I'll do. I don't really want it to go out. I do want it to go forward. Something like 10. That has the center one. That's fine. I'll just it'll just I can just rotate it when I'm done with this. So do I want to scale it on X at all? Let's see. Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, okay. So oh, 110, 130, 110. All right. Um, actually, it would have been really good to uh, to have selected the alternate, so I'd only have to do that once. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that because it's easy enough. Still got my fall offs and everything. I'll just uh, have to go in here. So this might be a little. A little tedious. Mm. Just need to make sure I'm selecting the alternate, alternating these lines from the top. Did I get that last one? Nope. So I don't know if you're, I can't see um, how many people are in the chat watching. All right, well, I can't see how many people are watching. All I can see is the chat. Uh, so I guess, Broke Killer, if you are around, uh, do you do any 3D modeling stuff? Or is it just programming? And let's see. Okay. Scale tool. And let's get that where I want it to be. And we'll drag these out manually. 110. 110. Mm-hmm. One thirty. Unreal four. No, I have not poked around Unreal Four. I've you I've messed around with the Unreal Engine uh, back with UT two K four and two K three. Um <clears throat> but nothing beyond that. I'm using Unity. Because uh, basically they were a lot cheaper. That's what it comes down to. They're a good game engine and were cheaper. And now I'm pretty much uh, fully absorbed into Unity because I have plugins and stuff like that for it. And it probably would have been a good idea to separate these two halves. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, and you can see so you're saying mentioning student access for Unreal. Uh, you can get Unity Indie for free. Um, I know some some features might be 
would be turned off. I'm not. I'm assuming that if you have student access to Unreal uh, 4, that the features would be fully inclusive. Mm. Ah, well, um, <clears throat> I would say if you can, like even before you get assigned stuff in school for that, uh, go ahead and start playing playing with them. Um, like, I... Okay. Yeah, I would say just go ahead and start playing with it because I, I know you're learning programming and, you know, learning programming is sort of, is kind of one piece of the problem. Learning how to then apply that within the game engine is another sort of problem. Like, I, I know you're building your own game engine and all that kind of stuff, but... Ah. Um, it's sort of like, I didn't go to school for programming. I taught myself, just like I taught myself with 3D art um, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I don't have a, a good, solid, traditional background in programming. Um, I have a, basically a blatant disregard for object-oriented principles, and I know that, and at some point in time I'll get the time to fix it, but um, I am pretty good at figuring out how to actually accomplish something in Unity, like to make things work, um, which you can probably tell from watching some of my uh, gameplay videos of uh, Pron Jeremy. All right, so edges. I'm just go down here. Forty edges. Does that make sense? One edge. Forty edges, and split those. Hmm. And I'm debating, debating backtracking again. Just an order of operations kind of thing. Um, I guess I probably... Hmm. I don't know if that would be being too precious with it or not. Uh, nothing too much beyond seeing what it looked like. Busy to work in other projects. Still trying to work on some educational game ideas. Systems, my... Well, um, I guess I can, <clears throat> hmm, I guess I don't, I, I want to try and continue on with this right now. I was thinking about showing the game, but I, I could spend an entire, like, I don't know, I could spend hours just playing around and showing and talking about the game. Um, I want to try and at least get this. And I am going to backtrack. Um, I apologize for that, but I want to make sure that uh, I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, let's see, assign a selection set uh, grooves. And it, that's probably actually not going to matter because when I go through here and split this, it's probably going to break that selection set. Let's see. Uh, use selection set grooves. Excellent. It didn't break. And I do not see my linear fall off though. Add a linear. It just keeps liking, it really likes to drop that. Okay. This shouldn't be too big of a deal. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I can, yeah, put it right in there. Now I'll go back over here. Do something like 110 there, 110 there, and 130 here. And that's more of what I was wanting. Kind of broken up a little bit better. So now the question, though, some, ah, yeah, I know why it's doing that. Hmm. If, 
because if I look at the front of this thing, um, mine is completely straight across. <laughs> so when earlier I was moving, I actually pulled it up with the move tool instead of the scale tool, um, it would have given me that nice jaggedy front. So I do like this where it is currently, even without the jaggedy front, um, but I guess I now need to to see about creating a jagged, a sort of jagged front like that. And I think what I might do, just to try, is go use the selection set again. And let's say, well, what if I tried dragging it now? If I like, whoop. Um, ah, uh, yeah, so that selection set isn't quite going to work. Okay. I basically need to remove these, and if I'm going to be dragging anything up, it's going to need to be in line. That worked out pretty pretty well. Nice and easy. They need to match up basically with those. Alright, let's try this again. Nice. Not too shabby. Bring that up like say 50. And then... Hmm. Hmm. 50. Maybe 50 is too much. We'll see. Um, so now what I need to do is select the the inverse of that. And then I'll be pulling pulling these down. So let's see, that looks like, is that everything? Do, 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 do. It looks like everything. Bring that, make that 50. Okay. And now I'm going to duplicate this again. Save it. Turn off snapping. Remove all my falloffs. And just have a look at this thing for the moment. So first thing is I think it's upside down. I want it to be like that. I want this single groove down here on the bottom and these dual grooves on the top. Uh, I just like it better that way. And I think it's actually drawn that way. Yeah, it's drawn that way over there too. Not that it probably matters very much. And interestingly, the uh, the teeth and stuff don't quite line up perfectly, just like the uh, just like the image and just like the photographs and everything of the real ones. So I think that's kind of a it's a decent looking shell. And let's try our friendly little uh, smooth trick over here again. Let's see if this will help or hurt, because I do think these grooves are a bit much. I'm at 860 polygons, so I don't really... I can bevel them to smooth them down. I don't necessarily want to. And that kind of smooth things down probably a bit too much. Let's see. Yeah, it's really, really doesn't take much to smooth pretty much all of the... Yeah, it just looks more dynamic like this. Hmm. 
Okay. I'm going to try. I'm sure this is going to blow the poly polygon count. I'm not really working towards a specific polygon count right now anyway. Um, obviously don't want to be excessive, but I want to see how this is going to look if I do bevel it. And I don't need a bevel whatever this one is. Ah, uh, no. There we go. Hooray for undoes. What really sucks is when you're trying to do real world art and you screw up and then you go look for the undo button and you're like, oh crap. It doesn't exist. I've actually accidentally done that before. <laughs> um, let's see. Alright. Alright, bevel. Go with a bevel. And we'll try... Uh, well, I definitely need a round level. Uh, width. It's looking... And I need to stay slightly away from each other. I don't want it to, you know, overlap across like that, and I need to make it not too sharp. Alright, so... Let's see... Width and set. Um, hmm. Let's, I'm just kind of looking at ev evaluating how this is. Um, it's giving me these kind of like knobby, knobby looks over here. And width isn't. So I'll probably go more with something. Yeah, never mind. But. I have solutions. Oop. Oh, wow. Ugh. Okay, I was not looking at that. I do still have solutions, though. <laughs> um, so, for starters, we're going to deselect all this. I don't want any of that stuff to bevel. Have I duplicated? No. No, I have not. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. And I probably have to select those edges again, don't I? Sweet. Well, it's worth it to have the backup, the backup copy. Alright. And I suppose I can just go straight across here. And select all those. Straight across here. Select those. I need to remove these again. I probably... Mm, well, I was going to say it would be a good idea to create a selection set out of this, but uh, I'm about to destroy the data that would allow for that, so... It's not really... Not really that important. And you know, this one over here just really does not look like it needs to be beveled either. Hmm. Maybe... Uh, yeah, I'll just remove it. I removed the one on top, might as well remove the one on bottom. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and do it. Assign a selection set. Um, all grooves. Alright, bevel. Doesn't really matter whether it's width or inset specifically. Um, width inset. Oh, let's pay attention to what's going on back here, as I don't want this to be too big of a mess to have to deal with. So 
so all that stuff is getting crossed over. Let's see if a fall off will affect that. I'm hoping that it'll affect the uh, edge slide. And it looks like it is helping. Nice. Nice. All right. So it's definitely, I think, um, definitely looks like it's helping. Still going to require some manual, manual labor here. Uh, let's see. Remove that fall off. Duplicate this again. Because you know we're looking at you know 2,300 polygons right now. Uh, so the thing is. What I would normally do um, would basically be to like grab this, do a loop down it, and then uh, remove the two loops on the outside, uh, thus cutting down my <clears throat> my poly count a bit and also helping preserve the shape. Um, So it would basically be to do something like that, which you know still gives me that nice round, and it even it looks better because it's sort of it it is smoothing. It's basically giving me a smoothed result. So the question is, how do I do that a lot easily? Because I want to do that a lot, and I want to do it easily. <laughs> uh, hmm. Like I'm wondering if there's just if there's some way I can join things or let's see look in the edge here slide loop bridge bevel collapse join averaged I don't think join averaged is going to work in the in this way but we can try. I think it's just going to collapse it all down into one spot instead of. Oh, well, I did click collapse. Uh, joint average. Yeah, it's just going to do the same thing. All right, well, I guess this won't take too long, so instead of wasting time trying to figure out an easier way, it's one thing. Sometimes, you know, it'll take you longer to figure out an easier way than to just do it. So mm -hmm. and I suppose I'll select that and that. And over here um I don't know. I don't know that it really is going to matter that much. I don't know that that one's going to matter either. Uh, let's go ahead and do the cut, which is uniform. Doesn't look like it's messing up anything. You know, this is kind of reminding me of uh, Flight of the Navigator, I think, at the moment. That ship kind of kind of looks like it. Or or Samus is uh, Samus's spaceship, <clears throat> at least from this side. Not so much from this side. And so now I need to go through and select the appropriate lines. And actually, let's see. Uh, okay. So what could be good just to. Help me make a selection set of these and just label it keep so that I don't uh, uh, 
I don't end up removing them. Select, assign selection set, keep. Flight of the Navigator. Uh, it's a very old movie that I don't remember all that well, but there was a spaceship and an alien, and it. Uh, they flew around, went underwater, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I I don't remember it enough to to specifically say. It was a movie I liked when I was a kid. All right, so edges. Now if I increase that, that's not going to quite do what I wanted. I can't convert that to polygons. Mm-hmm. But I do have these as polygons, and I can convert these to edges. And then go select, use selection set, uh, keep. I'm going to deselect the keep edges. And now that tells me exactly where I need to go deselecting other edges in the tediousness that is this model. So, all right, so this is just going to take some time. Feel free, ask a question, something, so I can ramble on about something. Or talk amongst yourselves, entertain yourselves. Trying to be careful. Uh, you know, rather... Yeah, I don't like that. Rather than going through and doing all that, it should be a lot easier. Yeah, I just go through and double click a bunch of stuff. Uh, so double click this one, this one, this one. And it should be to double click that one. I'm going to kind of leave the sides alone for now. Because they'll, they might require special attention. Let me, okay, good. I do indeed have an exact copy of this. So we're at around 31, no, 3,000 polygons. And about to drastically drop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see if I remember if I remove these edges, I get something like that, which is looking kind of nice. I also like the um, I do like that hard edge. Um, I could try smoothing a little bit. Thank you. I'm surprised that uh, it's I'm getting this far so quickly trying to stream this live and I've never made a shape like this. Uh, people do, um, you know, I've seen people in the past that would do uh, different models. They would just say, you know, okay, well, I'm going to do a tutorial over how to model something. Uh, give me a suggestion. And they would just model some random shape because in until you uh, have modeled a bunch of random shapes um, to get your mind around how the tools work and how you can combine them, uh, it it could be a pretty difficult thing to, uh, I guess, confidence-wise, to look at something like this and be like, yeah, I can, I'll just, I'll give it a shot, you know. And let's see, yeah, I guess I did miss that one before, or did I? It wasn't that one. It was. I need to remove those because I did that on the other side. Yep. All else fails, I can always mirror the thing easily, easily enough. Okay. 
So now we're at about 1800 polygons. And let's have a look between this one. Well, that was an inter that's really an intermediate step. That's not what I want to look at. I want to look at that one versus that one. And this one does definitely look a bit nicer. I left left or do jewels. The only thing you have left, you have to have a lot. Uh, I still have plenty to do on the coding side. Um, and yeah, I run into things that I hadn't anticipated or planned uh, left and right. But uh, they're pretty much the controls. At the moment, the controls are hard locked to be uh, the Xbox 360 controller. Um, so I need to obviously abstract that and let it accept other inputs. Um, but a whole lot of the the actual like the AI, the the way things work, the gameplay and stuff, I could build levels now, and like I could ship a game, but. I want to add a handful more of enemies. I want to add a boss, uh, at least one boss, you know, the main boss. Um, I might add mini bosses, um, but I, I have a whole lot of like just game logic set up. Um, all the stuff for uh, the behind the scenes data, data management, like saving your scores and all that kind of stuff and, and saving where you are in levels and just managing all that stuff. Uh, you can load between level or load between worlds. Uh, I've got a lot of the the uh, UI stuff going. Um, it's actually it's it's an amazing amount of work. Like I'm the only person working on the game, and I have trouble comprehending the complexity of the game sometimes. Uh, the complexity of what I have done thus far. And let me maybe have a look at removing some of those. Yeah, that did not affect the shape very much. Oop. Yeah, so I'll do that over here too. But uh yeah, um one of the things I'm I'm really proud about with the game uh is actually one of the things that takes the uh the most getting used to. <laughs> Uh, every game has a uh, a learning curve, and mine is definitely with the uh, an aspect of the controls, um, and it has to do with the fact that you can move on the z-axis. Like in Donkey Kong Country Returns and stuff like that, you can crawl on surfaces, um, but you you're using the the joystick to describe two axes. In mine, you can crawl on you can crawl on surfaces, and you can go in and out on the z-axis. So I have to use that same joystick to instead of uh, describing two axes, I have to describe all three. And I have never seen that in a game before, and I think it's probably because um, people couldn't come up with good solutions for it. But I think I have a pretty decent solution. Let me see. I have a I have a pretty decent solution for it. Um, uh, don't like the way that's looking, so I need to do these at the same time. Why? Uh oh! It looks like I lost a uh, I lost a slice in here. And I can find that and go over to lists. There, I did my first project for the top down shooter. I'm trying to do level progression and like all that kind of stuff and realize was not sort of a little lag. Yeah, um, <laughs> there, you know, there are a whole lot of different things that go, like you're talking about coding a game engine too. Um, then you, you've got things like, well, you have to code the controls, and it's like, well, there's a whole lot of knowledge, and you know, there there's a lot of information out there as to uh, other than your own intuition of playing it and trying to figure out what feels good. But um, there are a lot of things, a lot of game design books and stuff I've read 
that describe, uh, I guess, nuances you might not have thought of. And it just comes with time to be able to program that aspect well. And then you have like, okay, well, what about AI? And it's, it's just every different facet is a different ball game. And stuff like the uh, uh, keeping data around and progressing through levels or, or that kind of stuff is, you know, just another thing you have to do. And I had to learn, uh, obviously, about storing, you know, s serializing data and storing it and uh, deserializing it and all that blah blah blah. But so one of the great things about game development is that it's a ocean of problems <laughs> and an ocean of knowledge as well. Uh, so what was I doing real quick? Mm, never got it to load correctly. Yeah, and um, you know, everything you do, you learn. Uh, it's just like even you could use this model as a mini example. You've seen me go backwards before I can go forwards repeatedly. And I can't tell you how many times I've rewritten scripts. Um, you know, I've got over a hundred scripts in the game for different, doing all kinds of different crazy stuff. And some of them I've rewritten in not even just scripts, even uh, finite state machines like with uh, Playmaker and stuff that are pretty complicated. Um, I, I've had to completely gut and rebuild like a dozen times or more, and even today, coding up a solution for our, you know, an ant scenario, which proved to be true that it was a bug scenario. Um, you know, I coded it and then realized, oh, hey, I don't really need to do it that way. Coded it with about half the amount of code, and I'm like, oh, actually, I still, I, yeah, I don't need to do that either. Um, and then you know, cut the code down in half again, and. You know, sometimes you end up, uh, like my, my camera script was initially something like 400 lines of code because I was keying off of um, information I didn't need to, to key off of. And then the next day I rewrote it and it was like 40 lines of code. And it worked better as well. So it's, it's all just learning, learning curve. And I want to do do do. I don't want to weld. I sup. Mm, yeah, I don't want to weld. I want to drag the vertex to that vertex, so I can turn on snapping. Grab the element tool and just snap that over there. Mm, now let's go and duplicate this. Uh, now, I don't know if I like those ridges being that sharp. Let's try, let me save this in case we have a problem. Or smooth. Smooth seems to be well, it had been doing good things for me all night. Kind of failing me now. Um, let's see. How about... I don't really care to add randomization to it. Um, yeah, it just looks ugly. Yeah, it's just ugly. <clears throat> Push. That's kind of more of what I was thinking. Let's see. I'd love to have something like a level editor for my game. Like, that would be amazing. But, once again, like, that in itself is probably a full-time job. And, like, since I'm the only one making the game, I'm, I'm wearing a lot of hats already, and pretty much every facet of, of this is a full-time job. So, um, you know, if it, if it meets with some success, even even if it's successful, yeah, I'd like to make two, maybe two or three games off of the assets I've had, I've got, because I've put so much time into it. 
and just expand on it. Sort of like if you look at Gears of War or any other series like that, you know, they just expand and make things uh, more fancy. Uh, but then maybe doing a reboot of the series, um, having a level editor would be awesome. Hmm. I'm kind of, I'm trying to decide if I like that or not. So that is a direct copy. So first, um, I'm just going to go over here with the push and maybe put that at, let's try 25. 25. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to go try duplicating this again and drag it down here. And this time I'm going to use a fall off. Yay, handy dandy fall offs. Whenever you're doing organic modeling, fall offs are pretty helpful. Grab push. And I guess we'll also put this at 25. And see if this even made a difference. Kind of, uh, uh oh. Those handles, ah, uh, those handles are not in the right spots. Uh, and that's because snapping need to get off vertex and only use the grid. And there we are. Something like that. And then push. All right. Oops. Um, okay, so it did make a difference. Good. Kind of... Uh, now, I guess it's a matter of choosing one. Um, well, I guess there are two people in the chat. Let's call this option one. And let me go ahead and remove... And I'm gonna, I guess I should increase the smoothing. So give me a sec, this will be, this is gonna be option one, the other one will be option two, and just see uh, which one people like better. Doesn't mean that I'll go with that one, I'm just kinda doing a test. So option one here, and then option two. So that's option two, that's option one. There's not a lot of a difference. Um, there's a show his silhouette. And wait a minute, yeah, there we are. So there's that one and that one. So this one's got sharper edges, that one's less sharp kind of uh, clunkier, I guess. Ah, let's check out the shading. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I guess that option has problems, so I guess they might both have problems. Prefer option two, so the... so the sharper one. Let's go and just try some different looks on it. And definitely have that kind of shading going on. Ah, well I guess it's unanimous then. I was preferring that too, so good. Oh, and it's mesh eleven, so it's the newest mesh. Problems. Uh, angry butt eyes. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What's going on in here? Some messed up. Uh, okay, so from when I was removing edges, 
It just looks like something got kind of... These just didn't get removed. Uh-oh. Okay, I did not expect it. Uh, what? What's going on there? Okay, there's a lot of edges. Alright. I don't want either of you. What is going on? Let's see here. Hmm. That's two edges, and it leaves that edge and completely obliterates the polygons. And that's also two edges. Okay, so... I'm going to save this. Duplicate. Go do a uh, geometry. See if this will help me out. Do a mesh cleanup. And... I'm not sure that that really did what I was hoping. Uh, well, I guess at least now whenever I get rid of that, it gets rid of everything. If I just want to get rid of this one. What then? Okay. I guess I can work with this. It's four. Polygon. Um, get rid of this. And of course, going to leave that vertex behind. Awesome. Two, three, four. Polygon. Polygon. As well, turn off snapping. Cut this here. And it looks like I'm past. Pearlescence is on the outside. All hail. <laughs> the bling clam pearlescence on the outside uh... anything's possible I, I have not decided what shaders are gonna and you know, the bling clam could be a uh, a mini boss <laughs> alright so i think instead of messing around with the rest of that i might just split this down the center Get rid of that. Origin. Duplicate mirror. Uh, X. And uh, I don't want to merge. Because I only want to merge these. No vertices merged. Uh, it was origin action center. Okay. Um, merge fixed. There we go. And I don't think there are any issues on the lower half at the moment. Oh, let's see. Alright. I guess I need to go ahead and triangulate these. Uh, that's not... Alright. Uh, do it manually. I was hoping to have just a slightly easier time of this, but whatever, it's not too hard. Would be nicer if I could use my Wacom. I guess I could. It's just less precise. Uh-oh. Okay, problem spotted. When I mirrored it, so it would appear. Oh, let me uh, even go back farther. It would appear that these are not centered. And it likes to do that. Put 
position. So yeah, they are not centered on the x-axis. Hmm. And I'm picky. Cool. Let's see. The gold necklace. Kim gets a clam on it as a sign of victory. <laughs> I have to talk about those ideas in more detail. Let's see. Uh, I suspect that these are also not centered. And I'm really picky, so I want them to be. I want them all to be centered. Yep, can even see it there a little bit. It's not much but it's annoying. So set position zero. Look, nice and clean, all on zero. Yay! All right, vertex edge, and we're gonna split these. And then, whoop. Ah, there we are. Because I have not connected this. So let's undo that split, uh, select that, Go in and cut that through there so I can actually split these. Okay, so <laughs> vertex position, clear that, edge, split. And after I mirror these, I should probably end the stream because we're over an hour now and pick up tomorrow so action center origin duplicate mirror x-axis do not merge because I now want to do this automatic good now everything's in the right spot merge automatic good now the cool thing is as well, um, if I want to, and I do want, I think, about to find out, uh, if I wanted to break up that sort of shading in there um, to make these look like smooth ridges in them that are, uh, I don't know the word, uh, I'm getting tired at the moment. But anyway, let's just uh, explain this visually. If I split the edges, you see um, the smoothing uh, is smoothed across these four polygons instead of being smoothed across everything. So it just makes it look makes it look better. It defines the uh, the shape better. All right, uh, undo that and save the scene. I'm going to have to uh, be very careful not to play with this until tomorrow night because I want to keep working on it. But um, that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks for watching, and good night. And open broadcast.